All right, in this video, we're going to be solving some Hardy Weinberg problems using these Hardy Weinberg equations. My name is Mr. Chip, and I'm the AP biology teacher at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky. And uh, here we go. We're going to have some fun with this. All right, first of all, real quickly, I'm just going to derive this equation very quickly just to make sure that we're all on the same page, understand what we're looking at. So the top, the top uh, picture here represents, um, this picture here represents what would be found on your AP bio um, formula sheet. And so you're going to be given these two qu equations, and you're also going to be given this information. Um, the way I teach my students is that P equals the frequency of the dominant allele. Q equals the frequency of the recessive allele. Here they have allele 1 and allele 2. I guess it may be necessary if you were dealing with two alleles that weren't neither, were neither dominant or recessive or just some hypothetical problem. But it, most of the time you're going to be looking at dominant recessive, P dominant, Q recessive. And you're also going to be given this equation. So P plus Q equals 1 is the allele frequency, whereas P is the uh, um, percentage of dominant alleles and Q is the percentage of the recessive alleles. And you're given this equation, which is going to represent the genotypic frequency, P squared being the percentage of homozygous dominant individuals. How is that? Well, if P is the percentage of homozygous, or if P is the percentage of dominant, then big A times big A is P times P or P squared, right? And 2PQ is the percentage of heterozygous individuals. Where do we get that from? Well, big A, little a, or reverse it, little a, big A. Two possibilities, thus the two. P times Q times two is the percentage of heterozygous individuals. And Q squared is the percentage of hetero homozygous recessive individuals. Q squared is the magic number when you're solving for these problems. Please always default to solving for Q squared, then Q, and you will save yourself heartache heartache. Uh, so real quick, the information here in black is going to be information that you are given on the exam. The information in red here is information that you are not given. Uh, so I would suggest memorizing it or just learning how to derive it like I just did. It makes it a lot simpler so you don't even have to think about it because you've already learned. Learning is good. All right, so let's talk about uh, some problems here. Where did I get these problems? Found them. Found them on the web. They're actually pretty good problems though, so we're going to just do them. Sorry if, if you're a teacher and you're assigning this to your kids. It's okay. It's going to be all right. All right, so um, in a given population of 200 humans on a remote Pacific island, 98 individuals have the phenotype attached to earlobes, a recessive genetic trait. Wow. All right, so let's uh, look at this. Let's, let's uh, write some stuff here. Okay, so uh, I know that 98, well, actually, no, we're just going to. So the opposite of attached is free. And so I know that individuals that have are homozygous dominant is free earlobes. I know that individuals with homozygous recessive are uh, free earlobes also, or no, excuse me, heterozygous are also free earlobes. Why? Because the dominant little always expresses itself. And then homozygous recessive in this case is going to be attached, right? And I know that the percentage of hetero homozygous dominant is Q P squared, and I know that the percentage of heterozygous is 2PQ, and I know that the percentage of of homozygous recessive is Q squared, right? We know those things, we just went over them. And so I am told that 98 of individuals out of 200 have attached earlobes, or 98 out of 200 are homozygous recessive. I know the percentage of homozygous recessive individuals in a population is equal to 2 squared, and so I know that 98 divided by 200 is equal to Q squared, right? Go back and listen to that again. Slow it down if you need to. Let's do some math. 98 divided by 200 is equal to 0 0.49. And so I know that Q squared, thanks handy dandy calculator. I know that Q squared then is equal to 0.49. Q squared is equal to 0 0.49, then Q is equal to, what is the square root of 0.49? It's 0.7. And if Q is equal to 0.7, I know that P plus Q equals 1. And so if Q equals 0.7, then P equals 0.3. Right? Once you have P and Q, the secrets of the world are unlocked to you. You can do a lot of things. So let's look. So what I would do when you get to this problem, rather than answering, rather than looking at 1 and then going and trying to solve one. I'm just going to go ahead and find P and Q, and then I already know. I can like answer any question with that, those numbers. And so that's my recommendation when you come to any Hardy-Weinberg problem. 
the percentage, what percentage of the population is homozygous dominant? Well, that is P squared, right? Uh, P squared is 0.3 times 0.3, which is 0.09E is the correct answer. What percentage of the population is heterozygous? I know that the percentage of the population of heterozygous individuals is equal to 2PQ. 2PQ in this particular case is 0.7 times 0.3 times 2, 0.21 times 2.42. B is the correct answer here. If you're, if that's too fast, if you're like, uh, what? Then just comment down below. I, I answer all of my comments every time, even the weird ones that call me names. Um, and so, questions number three and four. In a given population of wild mustang horses, wild mustang. I love all the adjectives in this worksheet. Uh, brown hair is dominant to blonde hair. Okay, good. We know some things. This problem, I love this problem because it deals with some misconceptions that students often make. So let's do this. Big B, Big B is brown, right? Big B, Little B is also brown. Dominant always expresses itself. Little B, Little B is blonde. These are information that we're given. And we are also told that um, within the population of Mustangs, there are 168 brown-haired Mustangs. And the first thing you're going to do is see that 168 and 200, you're going to divide them. And then you have a number. And that number is P squared plus 2PQ equals a number, and you don't want to do that, right? So this is why I'm always saying you want to solve for Q squared. And so how do we get Q squared? Well, if there are 168 brown-haired Mustangs in the population, then there are 200 minus 168 blonde-haired Mustangs in the population, which is 32. And I know that the percentage of blonde-haired individuals in this particular population is equal to Q squared. And so I know that 32 divided by 200 is equal to 2 squared all of a sudden. I have something to do. 32 divided by 200 equals 0.16. That's equal to Q squared. Let's um, go over here and do some math magic. Math magic. That was 0 0.16. 0 0.16 Q equals then 0.4. And P then equals 0.6. And we have the secrets of the world unlocked for us. And what is the predicted frequency of vote number three of heterozygous Mustangs? 2PQ, right? Heterozygous percentage is 2PQ. 0.4 times 0.6 is 0.24 times 2.48. D is the correct answer. What is the predicted frequency of homozygous brown Mustangs? That's going to be P squared. 0.6 times 0.6 is 0.36. C is the correct answer here. Give us something hard to do. Okay, it might do that. All right, so let's see. In a given population of Vietnamese, pot belly. Pigs, lots of adjectives, all fun. Pigs are fun by themselves, but then you put adjectives on them, more fun. Out of 150 pigs, there exists 180 alleles. Okay, this is a little more harder. A little more harder. Um, 150 pigs, 180 alleles. What do we do with this? Well, 150 pigs, how many alleles does that represent? Every pig has two, right? So that's 300 alleles. 180 of them are the recessive trait. What's the... The percentage of recessive alleles in a population is equal to Q, right? And so 180 divided by 300 is also equal to Q. I have a math problem. Let's do the math. 180 times divided by 300. It's 0 0.6. 0 0.6 is then equal to Q. Sorry. Trying to look at one screen while doing something on the other. It's fascinating. 0.6, right? Yep. Yeah. And then P equals 0.4. How do I know that? P plus Q equals 1. And so now I have the secrets of the world unlocked before me. I am free to roam about the building, but I probably won't do that. What is the recessive allele frequency of the population here? Well, that's Q. 0.6D is the correct answer. What is the expected number of pigs with blue eyes? Man, it's getting crazy. Well, there's 150 pigs, right? And the individuals that have blue eyes are going to be homozygous recessive for that trait. And so that homozygous recessive percentage is P or Q squared, excuse me, which is 0 0.6 times 0 0.6, which is 0.36. So Q squared is equal to 0.36. And if 36% of the popul of that population have blue eyes, and there are 150 total pigs, then we just need some math. And that's 150 times 0.36, and that's going to be 54B is the correct answer. For number six, moving on.
plate. No, wait, number seven. Sorry. What is the header's highest frequency? P, 2 PQ, so 0. 0.6 times 0. 0.4 times 2 equals 0. 0.48. Moving on to number eight. This one's a little harder, actually. Because in a given population of 4,000 vampire bats in Africa, rather than calling them African vampire bats, which would have stacked up our adjective number, we're just going to keep it there. 4,000 this time. Wow. Percentage of the, dom the dominant allele frequency for long ear hairs. Whatever. It's 0.2. I like how that random five's there. Remember me from a long time ago? No. I don't. So if the dominant allele frequency is 0.2... And I know that P is equal to the percentage of dominant alleles in a population. And I know that P equals 0.2. Then that means Q, because P plus Q equals 1, that P Q equals 0.8. Secrets of the world are unlocked. Once again, this is very empowering. What is the allele frequency? Of what is the allele frequency for the recessive allele? It's 0.8 E. What is the frequency of heterozygous bats in the population? 0.2 times 0.8 times 2, 0.32. B is the correct answer. Just when you thought it was getting easy, it's not easy. Man, we don't even have multiple choice here to like make us feel better. What is the predicted population number? Okay, how many bats, how many homozygous dominant bats are there? Well, homozygous dominant is 0.2 times 0.2 or P squared, right? And so that's going to be, well, let's do the math. You may not trust me on this one. 0.2 times 0.2 equals 0.04, and we're going to multiply that times 4,000 bats. That's going to be 160 bats for whatever problem that was. Not numbered, this one. What about homozygous recessive? Uh, it's Q squared, right? And so Q squared is 0.64. You're just going to trust me on that one. 0.64 times 4,000 bats is 2560. And then, what's the last one I'm guessing? Heterozygous bats, 2PQ. That's 0 0.32. We saw that earlier. Times hetero, the bats. It's 1280. I bet if you added all those together, it'd be 4,000. Just a hunch. All right. And so, what else is there dominant alleles? Let's talk about those dominant alleles. Oh, how many alleles do bats have? Well, they have two when it comes to long ear hairs. I don't even know what that is. All right, and so they have two, so that's 8,000 total alleles in the population. How many dominant alleles are there? Well, the percentage of dominant alleles in the population is equal to P, and so I have 0.2 then times 8,000. Where did I get that again? 4,000 bats. Each bat is two alleles, so 8,000 times 0.2, the percentage of dominant alleles in the population. I'm going to get out 1,600. And my hunch is going to be that the other is 6,400, but let's do the math. 0.8, uh, well, well, first of all, what are we solving for? Recessive alleles. 0.8 is the percentage of recessive alleles in the population. There are 4,000 bats. That means there's 8,000 alleles. We're going to multiply 0 0.8 times 8,000. We're going to get 6,400. This is stuff is not hard. You just have to take your time. You have to solve for Q every time, or unless you're given something like this one. You made it pretty easy. And once you do that, you have P, and once you have P and Q, the secrets of the world are unlocked, and you can do these problems. Thanks for watching my video. If you have questions, please ask down below. I love your comments. They're fun, even when they're a little bit silly. Uh, I like them. If you And please, help me out. Like this video, subscribe, um, comment. We'd love to see those things. Thanks a lot.